Hello, this is Bob for CenturyAutoAir.com. Today we're going to talk about Denso type shaft seals. Uh, in our other lessons, dis, uh, out, outlining the reseal of the Denso 10PA series compressor, we already show how to install this type of seal. This is the one piece lip seal. So take a look at Denso uh, 10PA reseal series for that. Today we're going to concentrate on the older type Densos. These can be found on everything from Land Cruisers to Porsches to Toyotas. So this is very common type units. What we have here are the two most common styles. One, the front seal will actually be installed through the front of the nose. The way you can tell before starting is you'll see a snap ring in there and on the actual seal you'll see this little raised extractor ring whereas the other type does not have that ring. The other type um, uh, compressor, the seal will actually go in from behind the cylinder head. So when you look down inside this nose, you will not see a snap ring. Uh, let's start with the type where it goes in from behind. For this type of compressor, you will need to remove the front cylinder head bolts and the front cylinder head. I do recommend resealing the entire compressor at that time. Um, our 10 PA series reseal is the same outline for resealing the whole body, so we won't go over that in this video. You remove the front head and flip it over. You will then see that the carbon piece, what we call the carbon seal, rides on the shaft of the compressor. There are two machined flat spots that correspond with two machined flat spots on that seal. So when you put it down, it'll actually hook on to that. There's also the front steel part of the seal, which goes into the front nose. And for just getting that out, you can tap it out with a screwdriver and it'll pop down. This seal has an O-ring around it, which will seal it into the, the nose itself. The way a carbon ceramic seal works, this carbon seal rides on a fine layer of oil, which will ride the machined steel surface on the back. And it, as that crankshaft spins, it actually seals itself on that front metal plate. Therefore, oil is very important. Also, while handling these seals, do not touch them with anything but latex gloves. Your fingerprints can actually etch into the seal and create a leak. To replace these seals, get your package uh, of seals. You will notice this one does not have the extractor ring, so this one fits this type of compressor. As an aside, if you're in doubt as to which type of seal you need to get front, via front or back loading seal, this back type seal will fit both compressors. You just lose the extractor part. This seal is our part number SK753N. So when you replace a shaft seal, we're going to assume this is our new seal here. Take it out of the package, oil it using mineral oil, Lubricate it carefully. Make sure your shaft is on the compressor is clean with no burrs. Not touching that front piece of the seal. Work it down over the shaft. When you have it seated, you'll actually feel it drop down and engage on those tabs to where it'll turn that whole seal. If it is partially up, you, when you put it together, you'll crush the seal. The next part you would do is take your front cylinder head once again, not touching the machine surface. Oil it real good around the O-ring and it'll just simply drop down into that front part of the head and push it down until you feel it seal. If you could have a little socket or something that will push that down there so that you don't have to touch that surface, that's best. There is a, uh, an O-ring in this front cylinder head which should be replaced with all three O-rings in these as well. Simply place front cylinder head down onto the, the body. The seal kits include new brass spacer or uh, sealing washers. Put those down into and replace all those. Uh, approximately 23 foot-pounds of torque is what you'd torque those to. Uh, when you take these apart it's best to use like a breaker bar because these bolts are long and they twist so it's they, they break loose easier by hand. Next we have our front loading type seal. Basically the same, it is the same design, same way of working with it pretty much as the back loading type, but with a few tricks. Um, first of all, if you were to have the proper tools, which most people are not, and they're not easily purchased, uh, I just want to show you the, 
the correct way to do it so you get an idea of how you can work around it. First thing is there is a snap ring and a lot of times a dust seal that will come out of the front. This is an extractor tool that engages on an extractor lip on the front of the seal. That slides down and pulls up and out. This one came out much easier than most will simply because I've had it out several times already. So that's the front seal. Once again, you'll see the extractor lip that's there for the tool to engage on and pull out. You, if, if you don't have this tool, you don't have to worry about which seal to purchase. You can, you can order the type for the rear loading because it, it works on both. So once you get that out, you then take the extractor for the carbon, which engages on some tangs and it just pulls straight out. So it's just reversing the operation, put it back in. Lots of oil on the front seal, or on the carbon part, avoiding touching that with your hands is not to etch. Lock it onto the tool. Simply push down and you rotate and you'll feel it engage the two machine tangs on the crankshaft. Remove it. Oil your front seal as well. Drop it down. I got that in a little crooked, so let's pull that back out. Push that down to feel it compress that carbon seal, which has a spring in it, which keeps the tension between the two seals and maintains the seal. Push it down and stall your snap ring. Now, most likely you're not going to have these tools. So how are you going to work around it? It's not a big deal. It's just like doing it the other as the other type compressor. Remove your front cylinder head bolts. This will break the seal on the unit. You're going to need to reseal the entire unit. So purchase the correct seal kit for the body as well. And then lift off the entire front housing and flip it over. You'll now have access to drive that seal out from the back. You'll have to take the snap ring still out, and you're going to just pretty much destroy the seal pulling it out. But you can tap it down and knock the front metal part out, and the carbon part will fall out as well. It's going to be a lot harder than that was because this, once again, this has been out in and out a few times for sake of filming this. To go back together, in fact, once again, here's your, your tangs and your machine flat spots on the crankshaft. That's what you're trying to lock onto. So after you replace the seals in the unit, we will not install a shaft still seal till the very end. So go ahead and put the front cylinder head back on. And there are dowel pins on to line the whole thing up. Go ahead and install your through bolts and retorque the unit. I'm going to do that. I'll be right back to finish up the installation. Okay, so we're retorqued our cylinder head. Uh, new brass washers under the bolts, torqued to 23 foot pounds. Now, without the special installation tool, I have to work around this a little bit. It's very helpful if while this is off, you note exactly where the flats on the crankshaft are. They're going to great gauge a seal. If you need to make a little magic marker mark on the front cylinder head as a reference point, that's your best bet. You can see there are two flats machined onto that. I noticed mine are uh, directly at 12 o'clock. So I've oiled the seal up. I'm not touching the carbon couple screwdrivers and while pushing on the metal caged part, do not push on the carbon part. It will break really easy. I'm just pushing on the steel machined tangs and slid it straight down. It engages perfectly on those tabs. You can't really check your work here so you have to make sure that you've done that properly. Um, if you have not, when you go to put this seal on, it's not going to compress down all the way and don't force it. If it does, if you do force it, uh, you'll crack that seal. So here's the external O-ring 
for on the seal. These come already installed. And once again, I'm being pretty, pretty messy with this. This is just for demonstrating how to do this. You want to be very clean, clean gloves, lots of mineral oil, and really taking your time. This simply drops in from the top, and you can find a socket, or in this case I have this little ring, because you want to push him down very gently and straight. As it gets to the bottom, you'll feel it actually push, and you can push this down and you'll feel the spring spring that back up at you. Once that's down all the way, you'll look and you'll actually see the ring land for the snap ring exposed. Put your snap ring in. You can also help the snap ring in a little bit. And make sure that you see the snap ring pull back. You can always take that snap ring and kind of help it back into the ring land a little bit. And if you choose to replace the felt seal after this, you can. Um, I haven't found them to be particularly helpful. You can clean it out with a little naphtha or solvent and dry it and put it back in or leave it out. Um, the part number for the front loading seal on our website is SK740G, but our other seal for the rear loading will fit both of these when you do it this way. Uh, once again, for CenturyAutoAir.com, I'm Bob. Thanks for watching.